So as of a few days ago, it is officially a new year. It is 2024. And this is often a time where people set new year's resolutions, goals they have for the upcoming year. And this is something I've done a lot in my past, but I've never really been able to quite follow through with them. And I think that's a common experience for a lot of people. So in this video, I want to talk about the goals that I'm setting now for the coming year and beyond, and why I feel like this time is really, really different and why I feel like I'm going to be able to adhere to these changes on a long-term basis. As you probably know by now, we are embarking on a ketogenic diet and metabolic therapies project, so to speak, where we are using the ketogenic diet as well as other metabolic therapies as a means of managing and potentially treating my schizoaffective disorder. Now, these are changes that I was fairly sure I wanted to commit to regardless of the new year. So it does feel a little bit coincidental that this is beginning kind of in line with the new year. So excuse my new year, new me title. And then I'm going to share more with you about why this time feels so different and why I feel confident that I'm going to be able to stick to these challenges. And it has a lot to do with really feeling like my mental health is really on the line. So I guess to start off with the obvious change that we're making, which is around adopting the ketogenic diet. And what this means is that we're focusing on really reducing our carbs and increasing our fat intake to get into a state of ketosis where my body is burning fats for fuel instead of carbohydrates. And what we're really focusing on doing is tracking our food and what we're intaking so that we know exactly how it's going to affect my body and brain and trying to keep the carbohydrate intake per day to 20 grams net carbs or less. We're also really trying to stick to consuming whole foods and sticking away from the processed foods and really trying to steer clear also of any grain products or um, vegetable oil products. Now, it's probably also important to note again that I am doing this under the guidance and supervision of a keto coach, my psychiatrist, and my family doctor. So they are all kind of guiding me and supervising me through this process because it is a medical intervention. The next kind of metabolic therapy that we're going to be focusing on is exercise. Now, I do do a lot of running already, so that is something that I'm kind of already have a head start with. I usually run about four to six times a week, but what I also want to do is incorporate more cross-training and also, really importantly, building this kind of exercise into my daily routine and schedule. I think that that's something that I really struggle with in terms of maintaining consistency and planning for it in my day. And so that's going to be part of how we approach exercise as a metabolic intervention. The next metabolic therapy that we're going to be focusing on is sleep. I know myself not even understanding really how it affects the metabolic health side of things, that sleep is so vital to my mental wellness. And so that's really something that we know is important already to focus on. And we're going to be focusing a lot more on that and on building a really effective and healthy sleep kind of protocol. I've already started doing things like um, wearing blue light glasses as soon as I wake up in the morning for 20 minutes just to kind of reset my circadian rhythm. And I want to try to focus on maintaining um, consistent bedtime and wake times. That's something that I'm not very good at. And that's definitely something that I'm going to commit to working on a lot more stringently. And what I'm thinking of is going to bed every night at 10 p.m. and waking up every morning at 7 a.m. And this kind of is in line with the demands of my life, my kids and stuff that works that way. Generally speaking, sometimes I have to get up a little bit earlier than that, but generally speaking, that should fit well into my life and that should give me adequate sleep for metabolic health. The next metabolic therapy that we're going to focus on is no consumption of drugs and alcohol. I think, again, this is one of those ones that you don't even really need to understand how it affects your metabolic health to understand that consuming drugs and alcohol really impacts your mental health and your mental wellness. We've been on this keto and metabolic health journey for about a couple weeks now, and I haven't had anything to drink or any drugs or anything like that um, during that period. And I've already noticed improvements in how I feel versus when I was consuming alcohol. So that's something that we're going to be focusing on as well in terms of how that can affect health and continuing, I guess, to not drink or do drugs. The next metabolic therapy that we're going to focus on is social enrichment. Now, this is one that kind of surprised me in terms of being able to affect your mitochondria, you know, your cells at a very physiological level. Social enrichment and things like play even can really be beneficial to metabolic health. And I'm not even really sure at this point how exactly that happens, but we're going to dive deeper into that later on. But that is something that we're going to be focusing on in terms of prioritizing and scheduling 
you know, quality time with loved ones, friends, and family in an effort to, you know, bolster that side of our health as well. And finally, as a component of metabolic health, we're going to be really focusing on stress management. Now, when I think of this, it seems kind of hard to just mindfully manage your stress. And perhaps that's not necessarily always possible to do so, but we're going to be engaging in activities that will hopefully help us to manage our stress more healthily and to perhaps be more aware of what we can do to mitigate it a little bit. So this is going to include things like journaling, things like meditation, things like regular therapy. And so that journaling component or documentation component kind of brings me to how we're going to kind of track how these things are affecting our health. And my keto coach, Nicole, recommended an app that I can use to track my mood symptoms. It's called Dalio. I haven't checked it out yet, but I'm planning to use that to track that side of things. I also use various other apps to track different things like exercise. I use Strava or the Garmin app because I have a Garmin watch. To track my diet, I'm using Chronometer, as I said in another video, that kind of tracks all my macros and stuff, and I can keep a log of what I'm consuming every day. I also got this Whoop wristband. It tracks so many details about your health and physical wellness. It's kind of mind-blowing how much it tracks, but we're really going to be using it specifically for sleep and stress and kind of trying to track that as best as possible. And then, of course, there's tracking the ketone production, which just goes in line with checking that we're still in ketosis throughout this process. So we're going to be using various means of ketone monitoring monitoring, whether it's a breathalyzer or a blood monitor, or even we're going to be using a continuous blood monitor. It's like a little patch that sticks to your arm for two weeks and gives you constant feedback of how many ketones you're producing. So I mentioned a lot of different metabolic therapies and interventions that we're going to be focusing on. And I just want to let you know that we are going to be doing specific videos for each one of those that dives deeper into what exactly we're doing, how it's impacting us, and also how it impacts your metabolic health. But I do want to just take a minute to talk about why I feel this time is different and why I titled this video New Year, New Me, and why it's actually different this time. It really feels like doing these interventions and committing to this is really putting my mental health on the line. I think I've always felt a little bit at the whim of my mental illness and the symptoms that I experience day to day. But, you know, having this process or these interventions at my disposal and things that I can really do feels really empowering. And it feels like it's an opportunity to take back control over my mental illness and over my experience of symptoms using these interventions. I think the new year is always a time where people set intentions to make positive changes in their lives, but it's not always the easiest to stick to. And like I said earlier, I myself have abandoned many a new year's resolution before. But the chance that I could take control of my mental illness in a way that I never thought could be possible before feels like enough of an impetus to really stick to these changes on a long-term basis, especially if they end up being really successful for me. I also understand that due to the nature of this YouTube channel being what I do for work, I am in a like immense position of privilege in terms of being able to really dedicate my life to making these changes and being able to share them all with you here. I really, really hope that I can do this position of privilege justice in terms of fully exploring these metabolic therapies and showing you how you could perhaps too take control of your mental illness or mental health as well. So it's kind of nice and fun that this new project and, you know, life overhaul kind of, so to speak, has lined up with the new year. If you yourself are making new year's resolutions to better your mental health or your well-being, I wish you all the best. And I'm right there along with you on the journey towards self-improvement. Thank you so much for following along on this journey with keto and metabolic therapies. There is definitely a lot more that we're going to be sharing with you very soon. Wishing you and your loved ones good health and all the best in the new year. Thanks. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Happy 2024. <laughs>